Hello and welcome back to the Statman Dave YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at how Maurizio Sarri could set up his Juventus side next season. Don't forget to like the goddamn video, subscribe if you're new and turn the notification bell on to not miss out on any of the content. Anyway, let's get this party started. Maurizio Sarri's time at Chelsea proved divisive. The Italian tactician finished third in the Premier League and won the Europa League, but he struggled to implement Sarri ball and he saw Chelsea fans lose patience with the Italian coach. Sarri departed from London after just one season where he won his first managerial honour and took the vacant job at Juventus. But how will he fare in Turin? Let's take a look at how he could set up the Italian champions. In terms of system, Sarri's default system is the 4-3-3 and it's expected that he'll continue this at Juve. His Napoli side, one of the most aesthetically pleasing sides in European football. An advocate of positional play using the ball to move his opponents around. For example, if Napoli uh, could flood the left side of the pitch with the ball and bodies, recycling possession before switching out to the right-hand side for Callion on the overlap, moving their opponents from the left side of the pitch to the right side of the pitch, or alternatively using Jorginho as a bounce player to draw their opponents deeper and then use the space in between the lines to create goal-scoring chances, using width or vertical spacing to open up their opposition. Off the ball, they pressed with maximum intensity in a man-orientated manner. Unfortunately, Sarri couldn't get his style across cross at Chelsea, with the players saying his training was too tactical, and they didn't adopt Sarri ball. The players struggled to move the ball, their pressing was laboured, and Sarri won the Europa League with Chelsea with a far more scaled back version of Napoli. But let's go back to Juventus. Sarri's pre-season comments suggest they could either play a 4-3-3 or maybe even move to a 4-3-1-2 that Sarri employed at Empoli. Using Valder Fiori as a regista, two box-to-box -box midfielders and Ricardo Sampanara in attacking midfield. This could potentially be seen at Juventus, but his main focus should be how to get the best out of Ronaldo. Zidane did it at Real Madrid using a 4-3-3, a 4-5-1 and a 4-4-2 diamond using CR7 as a left winger or striker. Speaking in a recent press conference about using Ronaldo at Juventus, he said, I'm going to first try using Cristiano Ronaldo slightly on the left hand side, but really he can play anywhere with the quality he has. He has total freedom and I'll organise the other 10 players to defend. Tactically, under Sarri, Juventus have lined up in a 4-3-3 with Ronaldo on the left and they defend in a 4-4-2, leaving Ronaldo up front as it's going to be interesting to see how Sarri ball evolves over the season. First up, let's talk goalkeepers. Juventus recently confirmed the return of club legend Gianluigi Buffon with the Italian shot stopper returning to Turin with his contract at PSG expiring in the summer. However, I suspect that Juventus' starting goalkeeper will be Wojciech Szczesny. The Polish keeper has really kicked on since his move to Turin in 2017 and has that starting spot between the sticks nailed down. He saved an impressive 75.6% of his shots he faced in Serie A last season, which was the best rate of any goalkeeper to play over 2,000 minutes in the competition. Buffon will be second choice and probably pick up minutes in cup competitions, but having someone there with the sort of presence and stature of Gigi Buffon is going to be invaluable. On to the defence, let's start at centre-back. Last season Juventus re-signed Leonardo Bonucci, but his second stint in Turin wasn't exactly a success. No outfield player in Serie A committed more errors leading directly to goals than Bonucci last season. This summer though, Juve have wasted little time in strengthening their defence and giving it a much needed facelift, bringing in 19-year-old Ajax captain Matthias De Ligt for initial fee of 75 million euros. De Ligt was outstanding last season, leading Ajax to their first Champions League semi-final in his lifetime and catching the eyes of Europe's elite in the process. On the way to the Champions League semis, the Dutchman managed to win 4.2 aerial duels per game and 1.5 tackles, chipping in with two vital goals in the knockout stages alone, and he could be the heart of Juventus' defence for the next decade. However, his partner may not last too long if, for example, Juventus don't go with De Ligt and Bonucci, which could be a very good option. But I expect Chiellini to be the second centre-back. The cultured Italian won an outstanding 89% of his tackles in the league last season, completing a very healthy 
4.4 long balls per game whilst maintaining a solid 85% pass accuracy. Important for Sari's possession game are the centre-backs. They've got to be comfortable on the ball and be able to break the opponent's lines with passes. In De Litt and Chiellini, Sari would have his best combination yet. The experienced Chiellini would be the perfect mentor for De Litt and the pair could form one of the best centre-back partnerships in Europe. At 34, Chiellini won't be able to lock down that spot long term, but he's certainly the best option at the club currently to bring the best out of De Litt. And it'd be daft of you Juve to bring in two new starting centre-backs when they're chasing the Champions League title, but when Chiellini does tire, Daniele Rugani could be an excellent rotation option. Moving to full-backs, Jao Cancelo and Alexandro could be their guys for Sarri. Sarri side typically use asymmetrical full-backs with one pushing on and one being more reserved. At Chelsea, he played the attack-minded Marcus Alonso on the left and the more reserved Cesar Azpilicueta on the right. At Juventus, this could be reversed with Sandro occupying deeper positions and Cancelo pushing forward. Cancelo is one of the most complete modern day fullbacks in Europe right now. The 25 year old completed 2.4 take ons per game in Syria last season, more than any other defender in the league, and more than any of his Juventus teammates, and was directly involved in four goals. Again, the most of any Juve defender. Cancelo is the perfect player for the more aggressive role, and Sari should look to keep the player at all costs. On the other flank, Alexandro is similarly placed. He has all the attributes to dominate as a defensive fullback of the pair. Last season, the Brazilian, four Juventus led tackles per game, winning 82% of them. Sandro didn't show his best form last season, being directly involved in just three Serie A goals, the fewest he's managed in his time in Turin. But Sari could offer him a fresh start. The other option would be the right footed De Siglio, who could fulfill the role Husin played for Sari at Empoli and Napoli. The Italian tactician used one defensive fullback to recycle the ball through the Regista. At Napoli, Husin at right back would look to gain possession and then feed Jorginho. And at Chelsea, Aspilicueta did a similar job. This created a solid base which would allow Cancelo to bomb forward. But if Sari wants to go for two attacking options, 20 year old Luca Pellegrini could step in and continue his rapid development. There have been rumours that Italian Regista and Sari's go to midfield director, Jorginho, could follow the Italian coach back to Italy. However, that seems unlikely given Chelsea's transfer van. But but not to worry, Sarri has one of the best central midfielders in Europe that he could mould into that role in the form of Pjanic. Pjanic usually sees more of the ball than any Juventus player. And last season was ranked first for Juve in passes into the final third, passes per game, long balls per game, and key passes. And he could very much be the Jorginho of this side. Pjanic played a key role in Juventus' comeback against Atletico Madrid last season in the Champions League, picking up deeper positions and dictating the play when Juve were in possession. The Bosnians passes out to Spinoza, and Cancelo were a major part to Juve's win that night. Pjanic showed his ability to play as the director, and his numbers reflected that in his performance against Atleti, managing the most touches on the pitch, completing the most passes, completing the most long balls, nine out of 10 of those. Very, very interesting. Going off this performance, you can certainly see Pjanic being the conductor of Sari Ball from defensive midfield. On to our first midfield new boy, and of course, it's Adrian Rabio. Rabio, if Juve can address his attitude problems, could be one of the best free signings of all time. At just 24, the French midfielder has plenty of time to develop and is already one of the most complete midfielders around. Rabio is a genuine two-way midfielder who is excellent winning the ball back, but also progressing it. It's worth being very wary of a small sample size, given the Frenchman's lack of minutes last season, but his stats were really impressive. On average in Liga last season, Rabio won the ball back seven times per game and progressed it into the final third 15.3 times. One of the biggest issues at Chelsea for Sarri was a lack of somebody in the squad that could fulfill the Hamzik role in Sarri's midfield at an elite level. But at Juve, Aaron Ramsey could slot in here perfectly. Ramsey's stats last season match up well to Hamzik's in the 2016-17 campaign under Sarri, which arguably was the best season of the mohawked goal-scoring creator. Ramsey last season and Hamzik in the 16-17 campaign contributed to 1.5 tackles plus interceptions per game, as well as a goal contribution of 0.7. If Sari can get Aaron Ramsey 
fully fit into his side, we could see another classic Sari ball roll fulfilled nicely. Alternatively, we've seen a number of different midfield partnerships for different situations, with the likes of Kedira, Emre Chan available to add physicality, Blaise Matuidi and Bentakur to add thrust and versatility. But the front line is where things get interesting. Juventus have an embarrassment of attacking Riches at the disposal. The first name though on the team sheet under Sarri will be of course Cristiano Ronaldo. The Portuguese superstar's debut campaign in Italy was somewhat underwhelming, scoring 21 goals and registering eight assists. In fact, it was the first season since leaving Manchester United where he wasn't directly involved in 30 or more league goals. Last season did however see Ronaldo further transition to centre forward where he played 56% of his Serie A minutes and somewhat could be an issue for Sarri. Sarri's system is traditionally built up on inside forwards playing out wide. For the most part of his career, Ronaldo has been the best inside forward in the world. Now that Ronaldo operates more of a forward striker, it means that Sarri may have to tinker with his rigid tactics. We could see Ronaldo deployed through the middle with a left-footed Douglas Costa off the left as a winger, Pauli Dybala off the right as an inside forward. This would be a mirror image of Sari's Napoli, where most of the attacks came down the left-hand side, with Gulan providing the width and allowing Insignia to drift inside. Instead, Cancelo would provide the width, allowing Dybala to operate from the second striker position, where he's at his best. Over the last two seasons, the ball has been directly involved in 16 goals in 15 games as a second striker. And on the left, Douglas Costa would provide pace, width and direct running. In the 2017-18 season, Costa averaged 4.4 dribbles per game, completing 3.4 of those and finished the season as Juve's top assister. Whilst he only managed seven starts on the left wing, he registered eight assists in those games and his ability to beat a man before crossing for Ronaldo would end in a lot of goals. Alternatively, we could see Ronaldo return to the left wing and on the right flank, either Mandzukic or Bernadeschi with Dybala through the middle. At the International Champions Cup, Sarri spoke of what he wanted to do with the Argentine. Dybala could easily play in the false nine role, but we could also find different solutions for him, possibly behind the front two. This would suggest that Sarri is willing to adapt his Juventus system to get the best out of his elite talent, playing the Bala as a false nine flank by either the goal scoring, Ronaldo and Mandzukic or Keane operating more like a diamond, similar to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. This would be the best tactical setup not only for the Bala and Juventus but also Ronaldo. At Real he played with Benzema operating as a false nine. Benzema assisted Ronaldo more times in La Liga than any other Real player. The Bala in fact has never managed over 10 assists in a single season for the old lady. And this would change if, of course, playing as a false nine with Ronaldo ahead of him at Juventus. But anyway, guys, what do you think? How will Sarri set up his Juventus team? And do you expect them to retain their Serie A crown and lift the Champions League? Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new to the Stat Mandate YouTube channel. Like that goddamn video. And anyway, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?